So in this video, I'm going to show you how I made my own rack carrier system for my e-bike, my fat tire e-bike. Something that's sleek, something that's DIY, something that's easy and cheap, but most importantly, something that is going to keep the bike secure during travels in my cargo trailer camper conversion. Hello! Hi! I've needed a safe and secure way to transport my e-bike and my cargo trailer. I've relied so far on just a piece of wood with the mount, the fork mount that came in the box with the bike. Not sufficient, it's not working. So my plan today is to build a carrier fork rack for the bike so I can safely transport my e-bike in my cargo trailer. Now you can just buy some ordinary e-track system and then just screw it to the floor and away you go with ratchet straps and stuff. So there's three elements that I kind of want this rack that I'm building to achieve. This space inside the trailer is made to be lived in while camping and so I want something that's kind of sleek, not in the way, not something you're gonna stub your toe on. The second one is I want it to be easy to mount and dismount the bike, adjustable and flexible so that I can mount something else. And the last thing obviously is that this needs to be affordable, DIY, but it also needs to be safe and so that the bike doesn't come loose during travels because I do go down some pretty rough roads and I see this trailer bouncing around a lot. So I need to get basically this 80 pound bike securely inside the trailer in a flush DIY mounting rack system. Something that won't come loose, but something that's not in the way and something that I can take off and take out with ease. So with that in mind, I came up with this system and I think this is gonna work. So what I have here is a front fork fat tire bike mount. This is a 135. So it's wider because the fork on the fat tire bikes are wider. And these are actually kind of hard to find. So there's a link down below in the description of where I got this off Amazon. And as you can see, it's just a quick release. And so you take your front tire off your bike and the fork fits in here. This could just get screwed right to the floor. And that's kind of what its intended purpose is. But I want this to be removable from the trailer so I don't have this in the way, I'm not stubbing my toe. Or if I'm using the trailer for something else, I don't have the bike in it, then I don't want this to be in the way. This is a 14 inch aluminum T-slot track. So as you can see there, it's got a little T-slot. It's about a half inch tall and it's 16 inches long. Simple anodized aluminum. Now these are simple T-slot bolts and I actually ordered the wrong one. So the heads on them were too small to fit in the track. So I just grabbed some oversized washers and I trimmed them to size. So what I've done already is I notched the T-slot track so that if this is sitting flush into the floor, right, the floor is going to go up to the top here. I need a way for this T-slot nut bolt to get out. It just slips in like so. So essentially, you put your two T-slot bolts in. Got to remove the butterfly nut, put them into the hole. That's essentially how the fork mount is going to get mounted. Now they can be tightened down and then I have a nice secure spot to mount the fork of the bike. This video is brought to you by Hemiway. They make electric mountain all-terrain e-bikes. Now, instead of doing a five minute review on the bike itself, for the next five days, I'm gonna be riding only the e-bike just to really test it out and uh, prove it to myself that this thing is a worthy investment. Uh, for the next five days, I can only ride my e-bike. So ironically, I'm doing this challenge at like the worst kind of time. I just picked up this 2023 Tacoma Trail Edition. I haven't even owned it a week yet. And uh, for the first week, I'm not allowed to drive it. So my wife's gonna get the fun of driving the Tacoma. Really happy and excited for the adventures with that thing. Let's get onto the e-bike only challenge. Day one of the challenge. weather changed quickly but uh, I'm back at home end of day one day two we still have hundred percent battery and we got a little bit more snow on the ground today thankfully I got the fat tires on this bike so I don't think it'll be a problem on my way to work again 
got a little bit more snow and ice on the ground this morning, but I think we'll manage as long as we're just careful, take our time. Okay, so after fiddling for over an hour, I finally have everything set up. Just grabbed an old crusty recycle bin and put it on the back of the rack here. My wife has some pregnancy cravings, so I uh, gotta take the bike. The pregnancy craving. Making our way home from the store, we are fully loaded. So far the bike's working really good. So end of day two, still reading, full power. Morning of day three. Looks like it's starting off to be a beautiful day, but uh, you know, as we can tell from day one, the weather can change quickly. End of day three. I swear, I don't know how this keeps happening. End of day three and it kind of took a toll on the battery today because I had her on five to get home because I am covered in snow. Look at that. Gotta love March. Get ready for tomorrow. Okay, so, good morning crows. It is the last day of the e-bike challenge. To be honest, it's not really a challenge. Uh, it's fairly easy, simple to do. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. Riding a bike in the winter, kind of non-ideal conditions, is just part of the journey. Let me appreciate my commute to work. And you know, I'm fortunate enough that my commute to work is only like five minutes. Yeah, we're gonna get on with the last day of riding the bike the uh, power <laughs> seems to regenerate overnight i don't know if it's because of the cold so the voltages go up and then that's how it reads the power as you can see there and i'm reading two-thirds full i know yesterday when i ended it it was more like one third so we're kind of in that middle range and we got 38 miles on the odometer. Hemiway claims that their bikes get between 60 to 80 miles. I mean, according to these statistics, that is uh, definitely achievable. I have not been easy on the bike. There was some days where I was using, you know, the pedal assist to the max. So this thing definitely needs a wash. These bikes come in a big box and you have to assemble it yourself. Really easy to do. It only took me like 45 minutes to put together. And it comes with the bike rack, comes with fenders. For the front and back comes with a front light that is controlled by your hand switch here as you can see there lights on and then there's also a rear tail light the screen is very simple there's a power button to turn the display and turn the bike off and there's plus and minus to adjust how much the bike has pedal assist for you so you know that's setting five or I can bring it down back to one or even to zero. The kickstand is nice and sturdy. I have any doubts when I put the kickstand down that the bike's gonna fall over. Now there is one thing I do suggest is uh, wear a helmet. Don't be like me. This thing has some pretty good high quality components on it. It's got hydraulic brakes. It's a seven speed with uh, Shimano hardware. The bike is outfitted with a 48 volt, 20 amp hour lithium battery. And it's a good quality battery. It's a Samsung LG battery. I've driven this bike for five days now and I still haven't charged it yet. They do recommend that you charge the battery after every time you ride it. But just to 
kind of test it for myself. I really wanted to see the limit of how far I can push the bike uh, on a single charge. So the motor is a 500 watt continuous gear hub motor. And the payload capacity for this bike is 400 pounds. So that is for you, your friends, or you know any kind of gear you plan on hauling around with you on the bike, uh, which is pretty good, you know? That's a lot of weight you can, that the bike can handle. So thank you Hemiway for letting me try out the Zebra all-terrain mountain e-bike. Link down below, make sure to check them out. They build really high quality, nice bikes, and I believe they just announced three new models. So check out, link down below for Hemiway all-terrain e-bikes. I think about eight inches is probably good. And I wanna make sure that I'm not cutting out like you know, right to the edge of the floor. I see a joint right about here. So I might move this over just a hair. Measure about eight inches out from the fork. I know that I'm not interfering with anything. Everything clears. Okay, so there's the mark. That is where I need to cut. I know from experience from building the trailer, this flooring is about a quarter inch thick. Then I have about another quarter inch of foam. And then it's the substrate, the plywood floor of the trailer, which is three quarter inches. So I'm gonna have to dig in a little bit into that subfloor to get this perfectly flush. I say flush, but I think I'm gonna leave it like, you know, one or two millimeters uh, proud, just so that the flooring doesn't have a weak edge that can lift up. So tools wise, I think it's gonna be quite light and simple. I've got measuring tape, pencil, X-Acto knife, safety glasses, very important. Some double-sided tape, and I'll explain to you why I have that. Drill, and a router. I just got a three-quarter inch straight cut bit on it. So with that, uh, let's get started here. So what I'm doing right now is just marking two and a half inches from the outside edge of my cut line, because I want to use this piece of wood as a guide for my router, so that I'm not all, you know, squiggly all over the place. I can use it, bump it up against the board, and then just run it straight down the cut so I get a nice straight cut. Get that perfect. Should stick enough for now. Okay, got my two bump boards. Now I could do two others for the ends, but I think I'm just gonna be careful and make sure I don't go too far. The edges are gonna be rounded anyways, and so I'll have to come back in with a, a chisel and a, probably an X-Acto knife to clean up the edges. A little bit at a time. I got my router ready, and I'm just gonna use the power off the trailer because I can, so turn the inverter on. And then uh, we can use that uh, 120 output there. I don't like that beeping that the energy inverter does at the beginning. It's just kind of a kind of annoying. All right, so let's get to cutting this floor to install this nice uh, T-track. So another item to be using is uh, definitely earplugs. This is going to get loud. All right, so there's the first pass.
Okay, I think I got the depth where I want it. Now I just got to trim out the corners because they're rounded and then that way that will fit nice and flush. Okay, so as you can see there, I have the floor routed out just enough and I made it a little bit proud, maybe just like a sixteenth of an inch. And the width is a little bit wider than the slot itself, so there's some movement. It's actually good though, I think, because this floor tends to expand and contract due to temperatures. What I'm going to do is just, I'll just add some sealant along the edges there. Now we're ready to mount the fat tire e-bike. So let's go get it and uh, install this thing for the first time. There we go. Really easy. As you can see there, there's the fork mount. Really simple. You just undo the front tire and then you sit the fork inside the shoe and then tighten it with the quick disconnect just like you would installing your front tire. Now the front tire I'll probably have wedged in there somewhere. Keep it nice and secure from moving around. I can use the bike to its advantage to keep it in place and that should work really well. I'm not too worried about the back end here bouncing around uh, because it is fixed in the front and really the important thing that you want to worry about is the bike tipping over which isn't going to happen so. Well, that was a fairly quick and easy video but this is really easy to do and I'm really happy with the result so now I have a secure way to travel with the bike. I'm not worried about it bouncing around damaging stuff or it getting damaged. So I'm happy with that and uh, if you enjoyed the video please consider liking and subscribing and on to the next thing.